Okay, so now we're sharing uh, the mobile app. What I have running here is an emulator, which is kind of like a screen share of an actual phone, but it's just running um, uh, uh, an emulated version or simulated version of our mobile app. But this is what you would see when you download this from the Android store. Anyways, let's get started. So why don't I go ahead. Uh, once we click the get started button, it's gonna bring you to the login page. Uh, and we'll go ahead and click uh, log in. We'll give it a second there. Um, any existing users can use their login credentials to gain access to the app. Okay, so here's the landing page, the home screen. Like the web app, the home screen shows at a high level a uh, summary of the assets associated with the account at a glance. So upon clicking the hamburger icon in the upper left-hand corner over here, the sidebar navigation pops out where you can speed navigate to the various modules within the app. Let's put that aside for a second and let's go uh, to the map view. So if I go ahead and click map view in the upper right-hand corner, it looks like purple text. We are going to get uh, three map options, the pumps, service providers, and parts providers. Each will show you a global map of locations respectively. Let's take a look at service providers. So the map's gonna show you a global image of all of our service providers. This is zooming in on North America, but if I zoom out, we see there in Mexico. And if I take a swim across the pond to the Atlantic, uh, we see some of our various service providers across uh, the UK and Europe. And if I keep going further east through Istanbul, like many have done in centuries past, we end up in uh, Middle East there and across into India, uh, where we have various service providers. And I keep going further east into China and APAC. Actually, if I keep going right, won't it just bring me around the globe? It sure does. The world is round. So um, we get a, an idea of service providers across North America. If I click, let's click these guys. It looks like Mexico City. Yeah, Mexico City, just outside Mexico City there um, in Viejo. Uh, we have the phone number. We have an email address of our service provider just outside Mexico City and their website. Now, because this is a mobile phone, I could hit call provider. Uh, make sure you have a really good long distance plan because it will call them for wherever you are. So you, so be careful. So, a, so that's the beauty of mobile apps though. We're able to do cool stuff like that, which make it a little bit harder on a web app. Okay, let's back out of that. Let's go back to the uh, map view page and let's click pumps. So if I go ahead and click pumps, we're gonna see a similar styled map. The iconography or the pins or the drops are gonna be a little bit different color. This is the sales demo account. So many of you who've used sales demo on the pump manager web app are familiar with this. Uh, we're gonna have various pumps from around the world that are pre-allocated to the sales demo account. Most of them are simulated, they're not real. A couple in the Toronto area are actually uh, real pumps which may or may not be running. Uh, and again, because this is a global uh, application, uh, if we take a cross upon the trip there, we see pumps uh, situated across Europe and you know, Africa and Middle East, and we keep going India and into APAC again. So let's just spin around the globe one more time, land here in North America. And if I go ahead and click on, I don't know, who's this guy? This looks like Denver, Colorado. If I go ahead and click on this guy in Denver, it'll bring us some information about the pump at that at that site. Notice we're able to call Armstrong if we have any questions. Again, it's a cell phone, so it will call, I believe it's our tech support line. Uh, and you'll get someone on that call there. If I go ahead and click down on that, it'll give me a couple of p important pieces of information around the pump, it's MAC ID, it's serial number. Again, you can call us with that information and we'll, we'll be able to uh, help you navigate any challenges you might be having. If I go ahead and click investigate, it will take us to the pump list where we have uh, the, so because we pre-out selected this pump, it's just gonna show us the one pump there in Denver, Colorado. Go ahead and click that arrow. And now we have the pump details page where there's a few things here. In addition to having uh, details around the account manager uh, and the location and the Mac ID, if I go ahead and scroll down, we have some modules that we can click through. Uh, including some trends on the bottom. So let me click the first one here in the list, pump info. 
So pump info, it's been optimized for a mobile screen. First of all, we see an image of the pump in question, 4300. Um, we click the application design data. So we'll see it's a pump motor run quantity one. Of course, if this was a Tango, you would see it too. If I go ahead and scroll down and I hit the motor data, for example, we'll see 7.26 kilowatt uh, and the motor speed 4474 RPM. If I go ahead and hit the pump data, we'll get the serial number there. That's obviously a simulated serial number. And the tag number, meaning what you define on the DEPC touchscreen as the tag. Maybe you called it CHW, chilled water pump one, or you just put P1 or DE11, whatever you put, that's what we'll see there as the tag number. And then any firmware versions that are on that pump. So this is a simulated pump in Denver, Colorado. It's showing 1.25 uh, with the DEPC serial number. Okay, let's back out of that. Come back to this, this page here. Let's click change management. Let that page load for a second on the semi. Okay, this is really important. So change management for us is uh, where we track the configuration files or the firmware versions that are live on that pump. Well, we know that when we go and do a startup or a commissioning, or we go by a customer site and we configure the pump to operate in a certain way, literally five minutes after we leave, the end users uh, now potentially changing those configurations for whatever reason. Um, and so in the past, that might mean that until the next time an Armstrong certified service provider shows up, uh, that pump may not be running optimally. Now with the mobile app standing in front of that pump, if you have pump manager, we can see what the latest configuration file is. The pumps send the config files to our cloud. Today, I think it's weekly, but we're changing that to change of value. So when somebody changes it. And we have all the historical configuration files. So for this simulated pump, we have configuration files going back to uh, August of 2021. Uh, it looks like there was a change made in September, another change made in November, and that's the latest configuration file. So say if we wanna go back to the last time an Armstrong service tech showed up, we can go ahead and download, I'm not gonna hit it now, since it's, it's, it's an emulated uh, mobile app anyways. I can go ahead and hit download, that file will, physically be on my mobile phone. And then when I'm at that site, I can connect to that pump and upload the file by connecting to the onboard web server or simply uh, entering the details or the parameters for those configuration parameters that might've been changed. So a really, really handy tool, particularly when it comes to managing the asset or change management as we refer to it more generally. Okay, let's back out. I wanna show you a few more features of the app. Let's scroll down to the performance map. So if I go ahead and hit performance map, we're gonna show you the, well, we're all pump people on this call, the head versus flow curve map. As many of you know, our pumps send data to our cloud every five minutes. So on the graph there, you see uh, five dots. Uh, so that's roughly what that pump's been doing over the last 25 minutes. Is my math right? Five times five is 25, over the last 25 minutes. Uh, we see here some key statistics around the, the lo lowest flow and the highest flow and the lowest head and the highest head and the mean flow over the last little period of time. And for the pump curve, that of course is the 100% speed curve. Uh, so we get a little idea of how this looks. Now, one of the things that we've heard in some of our early feedback when we did the beta testing is that it's hard to read the graphs. But the great thing about mobile apps is you can do this on mobile phones. You can hit them sideways and flip that across. And then now you can see the graph a little more clear. We get a little bit more, the intervals on the x-axis look a little bit more clear. And, and of course, we all know this, when you flip the phone around, the screen should be responsive, even with this emulator, which is a pretty neat trick. It's able to show us, uh, show us that on a, on a horizontal plane rather than the portrait. So if I go ahead and turn that back to portrait and flip this guy around one more time, uh, that's what it looks like, more or less. Okay, so let's back out a performance map. Let's show one more thing from this screen here, energy savings. So if I click on energy savings. Ah, so here's another great graph that probably looks better if I go uh, horizontal. So if I flip that guy horizontal and do this, there you go. So what we're showing here are the energy savings in terms of dollars uh, for that pump month over month. Um, and if I scroll down, we're able to see the equivalencies there for this pump, uh, just like you would see on the Pump Manager web app. And I think many of you are familiar with that as well. Okay, so let's back out of energy. Well, first of all, 
let's go into uh, horizontal or portrait as they call it. And let's back out to this page here. Um, and if I scroll down, let's go all the way back to the home page. Let's do that. Okay, so we're all the way back at the home page. And I, I did mention about the hamburger button in the upper left hand corner where we have home and profile where you can change your settings around whether you like metric or imperial uh, alerts and the map views. Another way to access it is the, uh, the speed navigation bar on the uh, along the bottom. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but along the bottom we have some speed speed navigation bar modules. If I go ahead and click on the second one here, that looks like two reports called assets. Uh, that brings us to the asset management page where all the connected assets associated with your account are found. If you have a large amount of connected assets, you can use the filter option in the upper right hand corner. So if I go ahead and click this guy here and enter key searches uh, like serial numbers or city locations, the possible matches are printed to the screen um, and we can select an asset which will bring you to the view page. So if I go ahead and enter that Denver, Colorado pump, that's still in my head. If I just put Denver and I hit apply, there's that pump. So it'll show me on the asset page. If I hit the arrow, it will bring me to the, let it load here for a second, the same page where we were before, which is the asset management page. And that's how we can quick, that's another way in which you can, you can search for pumps, not just through the, the global map with the, uh, with the pins. Now, if I go ahead and click the next icon here, the bell notification or alert, uh, here all the active critical and warning alerts across the entire account are listed, much like the assets are all listed. And by selecting one of the instance, instances of an alert type, whether it's critical or warning, it will take you to the pump asset management view where you can view all of the active alerts in further detail. So first one we have listed there pumps offline in this simulated environment, it's showing 23 are currently uh, offline. We also have the critical, there's one pump with an excessive vibration alert. And then there's the warnings where we have a vibration VST communication VST communication loss, time mismatch, battery under voltage, and hand mode timeout. So if I go ahead and click, let's see, VST communication, it's going to show me two pumps that currently have this, this issue. If I click the first guy, let's see what it brings up. So when we click it, it will show uh, this pump here in Las, the Las Vegas Convention Center. Maybe that was one of the pumps we had during the ASHRAE show earlier in the year. That's okay. This is just a demonstration here. So if I go ahead and click this guy and I hit next, let's see what it shows us. Looks like it's gonna bring us to the asset view page like I mentioned earlier. And again, it's showing us all the different modules here that are associated with that pump, but really we wanna see the fault management, which I didn't show you last time. And it's showing that this pump uh, uh, has active alerts going back uh, to March, or sorry, April, four is April, April of 2022. And for the last 88 days or so, it's been having some VSD communication errors. So we're able to, to navigate that. If I go ahead and click one of them, which is the most recent, they're all on the same day. Um, we see that the VSD initialization failure happened. So the control card not receiving recommended parameter, reset the pump by cycling the power or call this number for assistance. And again, because this is a mobile phone, when you go ahead and click call now, it will actually connect with one of our Armstrong service provider uh, uh, around the world, mainly tech support at Armstrong. Okay, so let's back out of that. So I'm not gonna hit call now. Go back to the home page. And the last page I'm gonna show uh, because of our time uh, uh, is the help screen. So that's also along the uh, speed navigation bar along the right. And that's the question mark in the bottom right corner. So if I go ahead and click that guy, um, here the user can easily search for Armstrong connected details or finding a rep, which you can also find uh, through the global map, submitting feedback or reporting bugs in the app, or if they'd like to see a new feature, you can submit that request. Again, you can always send us an email direct to, the, to us, uh, the management team for the mobile app. Uh, at mobile app feedback at armstrongfluidtechnology.com. 
and you can get in touch with us in that way. So let's see if I go ahead and hit the contact us, where does that take you? Okay, so 24 hour sales support, all the different numbers we have in the different regions around the world where you can connect with us. And again, if I go ahead and hit it, because this is a mobile phone, it will call from your cell phone. So make sure you have a really good long distance plan is my recommendation. Okay, so there are quite a few additional screens and modules, features and capabilities in the mobile app. Why don't I go ahead and encourage you all to download the Pump Manager mobile app to your mobile devices, uh, again, Android and iOS, and flip through uh, the app yourself. And, and what I'd like you to do is provide us with your feedback because we're dying to hear it. Uh, thank you.